Okay, everybody. I have something really cool to tell you about. If you haven't heard yet about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain here. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will uh, distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one single place. Now, the way that you can do this is you got to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and then you can get started. It's really fun. We just switched over recently here at All Too Real 2 and I'm enjoying it so far. So be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. To the latest episode of All Too Real. Too real, too real, too real. My name is Michael E. Cullen the second, and with me via phone today is my co-host Matthew, uh, Matthew Haas. Yeah, Matthew Matthew Haas slash um, <clears throat> um, Killer Frost slash Elongated Man from Earth. 79 and a half. I'm from Earth 77 <laughs> myself. Because that's the year I was born. But, um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, today, this is going to be part of our Crisis on Infinite Films series, but we are actually covering Crisis on Infinite Earths from the CW's DC television series. 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 Series is. Series is. <laughs> series is. Yes. So, um, this was like the biggest crossover in television history. Dun, dun, oh, wow. Dun. Was it? Probably, yes. I'd say it was. Um, so, uh, back in December, remember that month, Matt? Yeah. That was a while ago. It was. There was the beginning of Crisis on Infinite Earth. <laughs> and uh, what they, uh, they had three episodes then, and then this past week they had uh, two episodes. So a total of five yeah. episodes. Yeah. It's a lot. A lot to take in. <clears throat> so in the uh, first three episodes, a lot happened. Basically, we had on Supergirl, all of a sudden, skies got red. Not red like when you read a book, but the color red. They were, yeah, you know, no, 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 the skies weren't being red like, yeah, a book or anything like that. Yeah. It wasn't like Harry Potter or anything like that, no. And uh, what we had happen was uh, many Earths in the multiverse were destroyed. Um, <clears throat> we did see some uh, nice cameos at the beginning of the first episode there. We saw Robert Wolf's character from Batman 89. So that connected 
<laughs> Michael Keaton's Batman, and, <laughs> and therefore Val Kilmer's Batman, and uh, George Clooney's Batman, who are technically yeah. all the same Batman. Yeah. Um. To <clears throat> the DC TV series. Serieses. That's fun to say. Serieses. Series. I think it's the series with the apostrophe after the S. I know. That's how. It's I don't know if how you. I don't know if that's how you say it though. I never. Yeah. Series is. What else was um, connected? Uh, old um, Robin, right? Yeah, from Batman sixty six. Okay. So we had two <clears throat> Batman Earths connected to our Earths here. Um, we also had, uh, I don't know, a few other, uh, Earths connected. We had some, uh, stuff from, like, uh, Titans and, uh, some other, some other, you know, there's a bunch, like, basically now every single DC property in live action is now connected to these shows. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. <laughs> like, like even um, Lucifer, which I just started watching because of this crossover, because I liked his character so much, just from like the, the forty-five scene. second, yeah, <laughs> from like the forty-five second interaction. I'm like, I like this guy. He's he's got an interesting charm to it. I think I'll start watching the show Lucifer, and then. Uh, I didn't realize at the time, though, that 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 show now is technically part of the Arrowverse because of well, I'm getting ahead of myself, but but yeah. <laughs> so, um, basically, here's what happened in the show: as the crisis begins, the uh, antimatter wave destroys countless parallel universes. Meanwhile, on Earth. 38, Brainy detects the antimatter wave approaching Argo City, prompting Cara Danvers to warn her mother, Alora Zorel, her cousin Clark Kent, and his wife, Lois Lane. Um, Clark and uh, Lois narrowly send, narrowly, uh, escape, um, send their son, Jonathan, off into an escape pod, just as the wave wipes out Argo and Alora, and we assume at this point Lois and Clark both die. But um, uh -huh. Harbinger, who is Lila, <laughs> is now Harbinger. She collects uh -huh. Oliver and Mia from Lian Yu, Barry from Central City, Kate Kane from Gotham, and Sarah Lance and Ray Palmer from Star City and brings all of them to Earth-38. Um, while Harbinger also rescues the Kents from Argo, Alora unfortunately died. Um, as Harbinger briefs the gathered heroes, the threat of the anti-monitor the the monitor raises a quantum tower to impede the antimatter wave while the DEO and Lena Luther work to evacuate inhabitants of Earth 38 to Earth 1. Dun dun dun. Mm -hmm. After Scary. learning uh, after learning Jonathan's pod landed in Earth 16, Lois, Sarah and Brainy leave to get him while the others stay behind to fend off the anti-monitor's forces. In preparation for his death, Oliver passes the mantle of Green Arrow to Mia, his daughter, by the way. I mean, if you're listening to this and you haven't seen these shows, um, stop and go start, you know, <clears throat> season one of Arrow. And then catch yeah, because there's so much. And then catch up to us in a couple of years, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, it took it took me an entire year to, um, well, no, over a year, I think, because I think, I think you had me watch the first episode of Arrow with you 
back in like October of 2018, and I just finally um, Got finished up. season seven. Yeah, I finally finished season seven like like a week before season eight started. Like I, I was yeah. really close to the fire. <laughs> <laughs> But I was watching all the shows, not just Arrow. So, yeah. <clears throat> so um, so now um, what happens next is okay. Now, when um, when uh, when Oliver learns that Barry is fated to die, however, he argues with the Monitor over the deal they made last year in the previous crossover. Which mm-hmm. was that uh, basically the deal there was that um, Oliver was going to sacrifice himself to save Kara and Barry. Um, right. Yeah. <clears throat> Oliver. Uh, um, ba- basically, what happens next? Okay. Um, the heroes make their last stand. And. Um, at the tower to fend off an army of shadow demons. Ooh. Yeah. They're basically like the, like those things in Harry Potter. Yeah. I was going to say, they, they remind me of, of Dementors. Yeah. That's what I don't know why they're called. Yeah. Dementor. I don't know why they're called shadow demons because like, why are they demons? Like I thought it was just anti men. Anyways, I got a song for that. Shadow demons. Uh, whatever, I, I don't have a song really, but whatever. That was good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was out of tune, but okay. <laughs> so, um... <clears throat> basically, um... So, um, Oliver ends up, uh, temporarily, um, nullifying the monitor's powers and stays behind to, uh, ensure that the exodus succeeds it succeeds um back on earth one lois's team uh returns with jonathan before the monitor brings a dying oliver to say goodbye um and this was not how it was how he was supposed to die according to the monitor so and then nash wells shows up and he's now pariah um, he, he's a uh, pariah, which is his name now because he released the anti monitor and appears to um, appears and announces that uh, events have changed and everything is doomed. Um, with Earth One Legends unavailable because they refuse to do crossovers. <laughs> <laughs> Harbinger travels to Earth-74 to recruit um, that version of Mick Rory, um, who is very similar to our Mick Rory. Um, so the... Yeah, the same personality. Yeah. So the heroes can use the Wave Rider as their base of operations. In the wake of Oliver's death, which he uh, cannot undo because... Um, of the anti monitor's uh, growing power, the monitor consults the Book of Destiny, which we were introduced to last year during the crossover, and uh, mm-hmm. learns of the existence of seven paragons um, who could turn the tide. Four of them are Kara, the paragon of hope, Sarah, the paragon of destiny. The Paragon of Truth, another Superman who has suffered more than any mortal man. And the Paragon of Courage, who is described as the Bat of the Future. Hmm. Yeah. The Bat. I wonder what that means. Yeah. Clark, <laughs> Clark, Lois, and Iris locate the second Superman on Earth-96. Um through uh um though Lex uses the book of destiny to uh mind control Clark 96 until he is 
knocked out by Lois. Um, Kate and Kara travel to Earth-99, where the latter fails to convince an elderly, crippled Bruce Wayne, played by Kevin Conroy, the voice of Bruce Wayne in the animated series. Um, who, uh, he, in, on his Earth, he became a killer. Um, Bruce is, in turn, accidentally killed um, in a heated confrontation between Kate and Kara. Um, and, and him, obviously. Yeah. Um, elsewhere on, uh, Earth 18, Sarah, Barry, Mia, and John Constantine take Oliver's body to the Lazar, to a Lazarus pit, um, in an attempt to rescue him, but, uh, accumulating antimatter across the multiverse prevents them from bringing his soul back. Now back on the Wave Rider, <laughs> the Monitor tasks Ray with building a Paragon detector, you know, like you do. <laughs> easy stuff, easy work. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, which in turn identifies... Uh, Kate Kane is the true paragon of courage. Um, unbeknownst to everyone, Harbinger is secretly contacted by the Anti-Monitor. Um, then, with Cisco Ramon's help, Ray Palmer's paragon detector identifies Barry as the paragon of love and John Johns as the Paragon of Honor. Um, and and uh, up until now, never seen character, Ivy Town scientist Ryan Choi as the Paragon of Humanity. In the, uh, in the comic books, um, Ryan Choi is the second Adam. Oh, okay. So yeah, he he becomes Adam after Ray Palmer in the comic books. So okay, yeah. Um. So then, um, Iris Ray, and then Ralph Dibney, aka Elongated Man, attempt to uh, recruit a reluctant Choi, who eventually compiles when Iris assures him that ordinary humans can be. Superheroes 2. After the Monitor restores Cisco's powers to his dismay as well, Barry and Caitlin Snow meet up with Pariah and the Anti Monitor's chamber beneath Central City, where they find an antimatter cannon powered by Barry Allen, aka the Flash of Earth 90. Played by John Wesley Shipp. When, uh... And, yeah, go as ahead. they are. What's that? I said, as, as he is wont to play the Flash, John Wesley Shipp, you know, basic, yeah. you know, standard stuff, which is, um, which he made his first appearance in, um, Elseworlds crossover last year. Yeah. Was his first appearance. <laughs> um... <clears throat> The cannon goes critical, so uh, Pariah recruits uh, Jefferson, a.k.a. Black Lightning, um, from the recently destroyed Earth-73. To, uh, to contain the energy, which I thought was kind of weird, but anyways... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hope we get to talk about that part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, can go, we can go over a few things in here. Um, um, our Barry then volunteers to destroy the cannon, which would result in uh, his prophesized death. However, Barry ninety stops him, claiming the monitor. Um, didn't specify which Flash would die in the crisis. 
and takes uh, Barry's place. Meanwhile, Constantine, Mia, and Diggle visit Lucifer on Earth 666. <laughs> to, get it? Get it? Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> to help um, in entering purgatory and retrieve Oliver's soul. Before they can leave, Jim Corrigan appears so he can uh, bestow onto Oliver the Spectre's power. Um, I thought it was funny in that in that scene too because uh, there is a Jim Corrigan on uh, Lucifer, or no, on Constantine, the TV show. I mean, and uh, oh yeah, I mean on Constantine, and then Constantine says on there, you know. When a guy introduces himself as uh, Jim Corrigan, he says, not the one I know or something like that. So, <laughs> Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so um, probably because they couldn't get the other actor for some reason. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways. Uh, so Corrigan he uh, bestows onto Oliver the power of the specter. So Oliver uh, accepts and becomes the specter now, no longer the green arrow. Um, And uh, Constantine's team is uh, sent back to the wave rider without Oliver. While the heroes regroup, the anti monitor sends a brainwashed harbinger to kill the monitor so he can absorb his power and finish destroying the multiverse. Before uh, the remaining heroes on Earth-1 are destroyed, Pariah sends the Paragons to the Vanishing Point to keep them safe, where they witness Lex replace Superman 96 with himself using a page from the Book of Destiny. Okay, so that's what happened before the break that we... So... Yeah. You get out, got all that? Yes. <laughs> this <whole stuff. laughs> so I was just doing that mainly to recap the audience that's listening, if they are still listening, if you're not bored by me reading a Wikipedia page. And, um, <laughs> well, you can't put your own spit on it. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, also to catch both Matt and I up here so we know what you know we missed in the first three episodes. I mean, not missed, but you know may have forgotten. So, yeah. um, do you want to take a break now, Matt, and then we'll come back and talk about the uh, the last two episodes and sure. and any thoughts we have on the uh, previous episodes? Sure. Okay, we'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Michael E. Cullen II from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay, anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering well, me. Because they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. Okay, folks, if you like it as much as we do, you're really going to like the Super Story podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it. Uh, sometimes we have guests. Sometimes we don't. Um, just depends on how we're feeling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter... Then you should definitely check this out, or I might get sad. And when I get sad, it gets pretty sad. Yeah, so I can't deal with him when he's sad. Yeah, no one can really. So um, yeah. So, so check out a uh, Super Story podcast right here, where you get this podcast, Super Story podcast. A respectable minister takes charge and leads head on. Minister Dobble Trike may be the foremost politician of textiles. As a minister, I have the utmost sensitivity to these situations, and if anyone's sensibilities were harmed, I would have sensed it. But his petty ambitions will almost certainly lead us to unknown danger. How dare you, sir? Unknown danger has its potential for profit. It's exotic. You can hear Minister Trike and his antics in the radio comedy Magus Elgar. Visit Magus Elgar. Elgar.com to download your copy today. And we are back. 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 Back, back in back. black. Back in back. Back in back. 
I don't know the lyrics to that song. I don't either, and I don't want to. I know, I'm you hang <laughs> ACDC is like my least favorite band. Anyways, um... <laughs> Maybe not my least favorite, but they're they're up there. Anyways, uh, so 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 we're all caught up to what happened this previous week. Um, so um, when we get back, uh, we uh, start out with uh, we we. Figure out. We find out what happened and what ended up creating the anti monitor. It was uh back um ten thousand years ago. A young Marnovu, aka the monitor, um, was experimenting with time travel to witness the birth of the universe, only to accidentally end up in the anti matter universe. And reveal the multiverse's existence to the anti monitor. So he somehow accidentally created him in a way. Yeah. So, um. So then. Um. In the month since the multiverse was destroyed, we. We're back at the vanishing point, and the Paragons have struggled to survive. Um, and then we uh, we see Oliver. Um, he uh, is with Jim Corgan and learns to become the Spectres, how to use the Spectres' powers and all that stuff. Uh-huh. Also, when we're back in the... Before that, I'm sorry, I forgot... Um, Barry had disappeared because he was trying to go into the Speed Force but was unable to. He comes back. It's been months for everybody else but only seconds for him. Right. He's like, I've only been gone for two seconds. And they're like, "Mm, no. I mean, there's no Speed Force to go into. The universe is dead. I mean, you know... Yeah, this is where things get a little confusing for me. But anyways, um <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot um, of this. <laughs> so uh then Oliver heads to the vanishing point, like you do. <laughs> you know, as Spectre with a weird modulated voice <laughs> changer thing. Yeah. <laughs> um so 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 he heads to the uh to the vanishing point to help rescue the Paragons and uh, strengthen Barry's powers. Um, so basically, how he does that, he taps Barry on the head. <laughs> and it's like, doop, you have powers now. Yeah, he's like, I just unlocked your potential and Barry's like, by touching my head. <laughs> yeah, at least they brought it up, you know. Yeah, that was funny. It's like, I'm touching your head to do it because we probably ran out of uh, special effects in our budget. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, they, uh, Barry, um, with his, uh, Barry drops off uh, Kara, Choi, and Lex back in time on Maltus, the alien planet, to uh, basically, basically, uh, so so they can uh, try to stop Marnavu from creating the Anti Monitor or whatever. <laughs> It was kind of <clears throat> contrived. Anyways, um... <laughs> yeah, it's different than the comic book, but maybe I'll say something about that later, but... <laughs> oh, you can say it now if you want to, too, because we're kind of just going through this, so, yeah. All right, well, just a short point, then. It, it, it's just a part from the comic books. I mean, I, I haven't read all the comics, but I have read, you know, that story, and basically, um, 
it's not the monitor that, that does this in the comic books. It's a whole different character named um, Chrono, who is of the same planet that the um, Green Lantern people are from, like the Guardians of the, um, I think what they call the Guardians of the Universe or something like that. Yeah. Um, he, he was of that race. Who who guard the Green Lantern or the the Green whatever the that ring or whatever, and um, this was like thirteen billion years ago though when he did this, not ten thousand years ago. Again, I know I knew they're gonna change stuff up because that's what they do for TV and stuff. So I wasn't like I wasn't mad necessarily, but it was a little, a little bit different because because what that guy did was he accidentally created both the monitor and the anti monitor through his failed experiment. Whereas in this show, it makes it seem like the monitor already lived as just like a regular person, like not not as a cosmic being, and then he accidentally created the anti monitor. Whereas in the comic books, they're both cosmic beings, but it's whatever, you know. Yeah, but you got to change things for TV, anyways. I mean, I think you know. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so um, what we have next is uh, after. Uh, Barry drops those people off, um, Kara and Lex and uh, Ryan Choi. Um, they uh, basically uh, okay. Let me see what happens. Okay, uh, um, they they try to convince <laughs> Novu to not to go through with his plans. Um, so then we have a situation where Barry. has to go through the speed force and retrieve the rest of the paragons. Yeah. <laughs> I was not understanding what this had to do with anything, but somehow it's because the anti monitor um knew what he was doing and then I guess he captured or got um killed them with antimatter and he was only able to get Kara um, Ryan and Lex to that planet and then Oliver as Spectre was able to somehow put them into the space. I don't get it either. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not understand this at all. And I've, I've watched the episode twice and I still... Yeah. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't understand because you'd think that if anyone's going to be able to manipulate the Speed Force, it would be Barry because he's the Flash and I know the Spectre has magical powers, but magic is different than science, so whatever. Yeah. And, uh, okay, it's fine. But anyways, um, so he has to, like, go back and find these people in, like, these kind of, like, semi-important points in uh, in the history of our TV shows. Mm. And um, so while Barry's in the Speed Force... He runs into a very surprised, a very surprising guest that they kept under wraps really well, and that is Barry Allen, aka Ezra Miller from the DC EU. Yeah. So that connects our modern movies to this area, this era. I mean, this, yeah. Oh my God! So. So then, technically, Batman versus Superman is now part of yes. the Arrowverse. first. Wow. Yeah. Every, wow. Basically, so basically, the only thing, the the only movies they didn't really connect are for some reason the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Yeah, the, the good ones. Yeah. <laughs> that was me. No, I know, but they didn't. They didn't seem to connect. It's like they didn't connect those, and there's like a couple other ones probably. A couple others. I mean, they also didn't connect Gotham, the TV series, from what I can tell. Oh, okay. But and also, yeah, you know, Aurelius Dumbledore. He, he also plays Aurelius Dumbledore in that awesome movie, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Don't forget that one, okay? Oh yeah. <laughs> but basically, it's it's really interesting too. People are. Uh, I listened to uh, a podcast the other day about uh, mm-hmm. about Crisis, and um, in that. Uh, in that uh, episode, they were kind of complaining that there wasn't enough action in these things because they had to pay for. They they were complaining and trying to say that it was because they had to pay for Ezra Miller. Oh, which I then read an article right after that, 
it talked about how they got Ezra Miller. Um, basically, the uh, Warner Brothers called up uh, called up Mark Guggenheim, the the um, executive producer of the shows, and uh, mm. said said uh, they they had already shot everything. They had they had finished the episodes. They had the whole crisis filmed at that point, and they said, "Hey." Is there any way you can fit Ezra Miller into your crisis? And Mark's like, of course. And then, uh, but but he but he, which I think is really cool though. He says, "Let me talk to Grant first. Mm-hmm. So he went and talked to Grant Gustin and said, "Would you be offended if we had Ezra Miller in this?" Which is pretty cool because he didn't want to, you know, step on the Flash's toes. <laughs> Right. Which you can't do because he's so fast. You can't really step up. Right, him. exactly. Yeah, anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you could try. But. Yeah. But, you know. but so, so and, and, and Grant was all for it. He he thought it was a really cool idea. And uh, then he, uh, then they, they shot the scene. They, 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 uh, they, they snuck Ezra Miller up to Vancouver and shot the scene wow. and kept it very secret. And nobody knew, not even the other actors in the show. Wow! Like the only person that really so, knew, the only person that really knew was Grant, and the uh, and the crew that was available, you know, on set. Wow! Yeah. So what was what was that supposed to be about, though? Because like I thought she was supposed to be like talking, like he was supposed to be seeing like memories and stuff like that. So what, like, what was that supposed to convey? Him meeting like a different version See, of himself. I got that, a little confused on that, but I think from what I've read is basically that was like he, he's because he's out of he's out of time you know so he's actually traveling in time when he's going into the speed force okay and basically what ended up happening is Ezra's flash kind of ended up in the speed force too and was kind of freaking out because he'd never been there before oh okay so <laughs> that's why he was confused and thing is like in the movies he's never called the flash the coolest thing in that scene was is basically I think our Barry gives that Barry his name. Oh, okay. Because he called, he's like, you're another Flash, and then he's like, Flash. <laughs> so okay. So I think yeah, I got of, that because I what I think, just, yeah he just. Sorry, what this gives me hope for, and I think it would be really cool, is if they do make that Flash movie, Flashpoint, that they're trying to make with uh, Ezra Miller, mm. it'd be really cool if they had this scene in that movie. Yeah. Like, he ends up in the Speed Force and fucks up, you know, does the Flashpoint. But while he's in there, he ends up running into Grant Gustin. <laughs> Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. I really hope that that happens. Um, and then I won't be as pissed about the fact that they're that Grant's not the Flash in the movies, <laughs> right? Because I think Grant is the best Flash there's ever been. I mean, John Wesley Shipp was good, but you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I agree. He very. I mean, sorry, Bob. I'm just calling him Barry. That's how he, he just personality wise. That's what. I always envisioned the Flash would act like, like kind of like how, like um, John Cryer plays like the perfect Lex Luthor. Like he's yeah, he's not like a bumbling buffoon. Like he is funny and sarcastic, but there's an edge to him. Like you know. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I I I do I do agree that Le- you know, um, John is the best uh, Lex I think we've ever had. Um, yeah. I mean, some people will say Michael Rosenbaum on Smallville, but I haven't really watched a lot of Smallville, so I can't really talk to that. I mean, I, I've watched some, and I thought he was good on there, but and I I love Michael Rosenbaum as a person. His his uh Inside of You podcast is like awesome. So if you haven't listened to that, cool. check it out. Cool. Yeah, the episode with Rain Wilson was really cool. Anyways, um, so uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, you know, aside. So anyway, so so, so we got to see Ezra Miller. That was cool. But then yeah. uh, basically what ends up happening then is uh, Barry goes through and he ends up picking up uh, the rest of the Paragons. Like you do. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a lot of MacGuffins, a lot of MacGuffins in this whole, yeah. um, right, not just the crisis, but even, even like, the, the build-up, because, like, from the beginnings of season eight of Arrow and season six of Flash, it's building up into a lot of MacGuffins, like, like, Oliver has to go to, like, Earth 2 to get, like, a dwarf star thing. I mean, it's a lot of, like, yeah. stuff like that. <clears throat> Very true. A lot of MacGuffins and things, you know, things that just don't make, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of it doesn't make sense. But, I mean, I, uh, I, I, still we, lo- I, I still love these shows and I'm entertained by them, but sometimes you're just like, that's kind of contrived. <laughs> Anyways, um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is some things like that. <laughs> So, uh, anyways, um, the, the, the Paragons end up, uh, once Barry retrieves everyone, um, basically they end up, uh, they end up, um, realizing that they can, uh, destroy the anti-monitor um or they try to uh but they basically because they realize that uh they can't stop the anti-monitor from being created because regardless he's going to be created in some universe in the multiverse I mean there's literally infinite so yeah. you, all you got to do is find one um, Mar Navu who's going to go through with the experiment. I mean, it's not hard. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you can't stop them all. And uh, right. so the Paragons <laughs> uh, battle the Anti-Monitor and his Shadow Demons. The Anti-Monitor and his Shadow Demons. I'm going to create a band called that. Anyways, uh, great. <laughs> the Anti-Monitor and the Shadow Demons. That's a great... <laughs> <clears throat> we'll just just play songs about DC properties. Yeah, <laughs> every every song's about a different character, like a song about Fire Star, about uh. You know. <laughs> and um, so uh, then um, Oliver uses his Spectre powers. Uh, to restore the multiverse. Um, with the Paragons providing additional assistance via Lex Books of Destiny. And they all kind of just stare off like the Care Bears. <laughs> I'm stealing yeah, that from did. somebody <laughs> I heard that from, but it's like a Care Bear stare right there. Like they're all like, mm, we've got these Paragon powers. We're going to combine and, you know, become like a. Megazord, and you know, I don't know. It's just like, um, but <laughs> yeah, it's like just weird. But anyways, um, the uh, they also have a assistance via Lex's Book of Destiny page. As a result, however, um, Oliver dies a second and final time in in Barry's yeah. in Barry's arms, like you do. Oh, uh, anyways, <laughs> I know. That's yeah, sad. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it was cool and all, but I mean, it was kind of, I don't know, kind of a anticlimactic death because he had already died once before. Right. And it was, I mean, even that one was kind of, and, well, I mean, that that was straight from the comic books for that, the first one. I mean, that was, yeah. I mean, he was fighting the Shadow Demons, which again is kind of like one of those things where it's like, yeah, it, sometimes it sucks, but then it's also like, well, sometimes, you know, even the greatest hero does die in, a, in an anti-climatic fashion where you're just fighting off, you know, somebody's goons as opposed to, like, the the big main bad guy or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, it's just, I don't know. It, it was cool, though. I mean, um, so then they, uh, so then everybody wakes up in a newly recreated universe, uh, the Paragons discover they are the only ones to remember the crisis. And um, in this process, Earth-1, which is uh, Barry and Oliver's Earth and everything, um, 
Earth 38th, 38, which is uh, Supergirl's Earth, and um, Earth 73, which was uh, which was um, Black Lightning's Earth, are all merged into one composite uh, um, Earth designated as Earth Prime. Yeah. Um, among the other changes throughout the multiverse. Um, well, uh, see, see, they, they're the only ones who remember the Paragons are. So, uh, mm. John uses his, uh, uh, psionic powers to, uh, bring their, um, allies up to speed. So he basically, he basically does a little, uh, Oliver-like touch on the head and basically can, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Instead, instead, he touches him on the temple, not the forehead. Yeah, That's basically, different. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so then they, uh, they all are caught up to speed and know what's going on. And, uh, they discover that the Anti-Monitor is still alive. And, uh, plotting to renew his, uh, destruction of the multiverse. Uh, this was after, actually, first off, we had a little Bebo situation. You remember the Bebo situation? What's that? I didn't hear what you said. Uh, we, we, we had a Bebo situation? Oh, yeah, that's right. Bebo, giant Bebo returned. <laughs> if yeah. you don't remember, in season three of Legends of Tomorrow, they... um. Bebo plays a pretty big role in that entire series, I mean, that entire season. And at the end of that season, because they're doing the DC version of the Infinity Gauntlet by having totems, which was similar but not the same, but basically you had to get all six totems to work together to create something powerful enough to defeat Malice or Malice, as he corrected people, the Time Demon, who was creating time anachronisms in order to basically just damage time to the point that he could escape his time prison. Yeah, these shows are crazy. <laughs> so, and then they they eventually um, turned into a giant Bebo. To, Bebo is like a toy, like a fake, like a their version of like uh, Elmo or something like that. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Elmo meets uh, Teddy Ruxpin meets, uh, <laughs> meets Furby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It's like this cute little blue yeah. toy, and they, they defeat Malice with that. But then, yeah, someone is using um, Bebo to terrorize, um, I think it was Central City. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, any, anyways, anyways uh, yeah, so, so, some magician guy is using Bebo in this one, tried to, you know, destroy it. So they all try to figure out what's up, and then they they destroy Bebo. Um <laughs> Which was kind of funny and fun. Um, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah, uh, the first part, though, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about before they uh, – so, so uh, it was pretty cool when they realized that they were on the same Earth. Mm-hmm. When uh, um, Kara goes to see what's going on and she uh, is fighting the Weather Witch, which is uh, mm-hmm. from, from Barry's Earth. Right. And then um, <laughs> Barry walks up and he says, sorry, this is one of mine. <laughs> and uh which I thought was funny and then they realize they're on the same earth and then this old guy comes up and talks they 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 ask him about like have have we you know what's you know he basically says yeah there's a you, know, you, you guys always you know been together yeah and uh cool thing about that that guy who played the old guy is Marv Wolfman mm. who is the writer of the comic book Crisis on Infinite Earths <laughs> so 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 they got a you know they got the uh comic book writer to be a to do a cameo. That's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> um anyways uh so uh certain things have changed on these earths now. Um they end up finding out that they can uh they end up destroying the the uh the anti monitor by using by shrinking them down. I'm not fully understanding how that worked, but it did. Well, it's like the Ant-Man type of 
thing, you know, the quantum realm. Oh, and, but, okay. But the way he described, well, the way um, Ryan Choi described, you know, the paragon of humanity, he said that he'd be shrinking for all eternity. Like, he's always getting smaller. Like, he never, so, like, it, it would get to the point that, like, it would even be beyond the quantum realm where Ant Man's at because it just keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking until, like, it'd be, I mean, that's got to be, like, terrifying. But you, but I, I want to say something. You forgot the, the, the really big thing so far. What, what happens? In the beginning of this episode, when Kara is invited to go go to a press event. Oh yeah, I was going to bring that up in a second here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so uh, Kara's at this uh, press event for the Nobel Peace Prize, and uh, the person accepting the award is Lex Luthor. Ooh. So that'll probably be. Uh, an interesting uh, story going through the rest of the season or at least a couple episodes of uh, Supergirl. Mm-hmm. So now in this world, Lex actually owns the DEO somehow <laughs> and has always been a good guy in everybody's eyes. So in Earth Prime, that's what happened. So... um <laughs> Anyways, uh, they so, so like I said, they shrank the anti monitor. Um, once it's finished, uh, um, sometime later, Barry, Kara, Sarah, Kate, Clark, and John, oh, and Jefferson, sorry, hold a memorial service for Oliver. Um, there was a funny scene there too, like where uh, where Black Lightning says uh, says something like, you know, does this happen often or something like these? Cra- <laughs> and then and then Kate says, "Don't worry, I was the new kid last year." <laughs> <laughs> um, and they, they, anyways, they come together and uh, create a League of Heroes to protect the new world in Oliver's memory. In mm-hmm. um in a building that is a warehouse that was once that that Barry owns because it was once owned by uh, um by Star Labs and uh, which we had seen this this uh, warehouse in a previous um, crisis I can't remember which one mm-hmm. but uh, they they have this really cool round table with uh, chairs with each of their symbols on it what was that. What's that? I'm saying. Oh, okay. Something cracked. Something just oh. came in. That's weird. Oh wow. Maybe I'm getting somebody else's phone call here. Um. Anyways. <laughs> anyways. So, so. So they 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 create that and then um. They they basically have it created the uh, Hall of Justice, which is what the warehouse looks like from the cartoon, and we also see. Um. A cage with the name Gleek on it, <laughs> and Gleek was a little um, monkey alien creature in the animated Super Friends TV series. <laughs> so, and that's where we are. Yeah. Um. Do you want to take a break, Matt? Sure. Yeah, we'll take a break, and then we'll be uh, right back with some uh, some of our thoughts on the episodes. Yeah. Hey folks, this is uh, Michael E. Cullen II um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast called Super. It's called All Too Real. And on that show, what, what do we do, Matt? We, we watch biopics, and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we, we, It's a lot we, more exciting than that, though. Yeah, so, 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 so we... We analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? Yeah, they're, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, so uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, but we uh, talk about great, sh- great, uh, great movies like uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and uh, 
a futile and stupid gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh, we're going to cover a lot more. So uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts. And be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. And make sure you're not afraid to get all too, too real. real. Bye-bye. And we are back. Back. So, um, so Matt, what what thoughts yeah. did you have on the whole crisis? Any uh, Anything stand out to you? Good, bad, indifferent, whatever? <clears throat> well, I really liked it a lot. I mean, in general, just the the sheer ambition of it, you know, five episodes and you could count the black lightning episode as, as a sort of like maybe like a 2.5, you know, so yeah. it's, it's a lot of, a lot of material to really just kind of take in. And, um, I, I liked, I, I liked the multiverse aspect of the whole show. So like, it is going to be kind of strange going into like a single universe now. Um, but you know, it's, change is good because we've, we've been dealing with officially dealing with the multiverse since um, season two of the flash and it was teased in the very first episode of the first season of the flash when they showed a newspaper article that flash vanishes during prices. So yeah. they've been teasing this idea for a really, really long time. And, um, and technically last year's crossover, was just all in preparation for this year's crossover. So technically it's like really like eight episodes, you know, yeah. all together. I mean, um, if you count Elseworlds, cause I did felt that Elseworlds was kind of a letdown, but I realized that it was meant to prepare for, you know, the bigger one. Yeah. And, uh, but like, there are, there are some issues I have, like just, you know, like the costumes, like, I really thought the anti monitor almost looked like some like animatronic like thing from like Major Magic a little bit. Like, yeah. like I don't know, like he just looked stupid to me. Like I was expecting someone that like looked like really scary, and then we get you know, let's make way for you know this like weird looking dude with like a tube in his costume or something. I don't know. I thought that was kind of if the um the whole. The whole Barry Allen for Earth 90 thing, I didn't understand because, so it's like, you might have some thoughts on this too, but so, so like, he's got Barry at the Flash from Earth 90, um, basically he's forcing him to run on his treadmill for like eternity essentially to, to power up, you know, all this antimatter energy to destroy all the planets. And then when they find him through the help of Pariah, uh, Cisco uses his vibe powers to blast, um, you know, Earth 90 Barry out of the thing. And then, and he's like, Oh, thanks for the, the reprieve kid. But I need to get back on there because if I don't, he, he's triggered a fail safe so that it destroys all of the multiverse at once. That's like, well, why, why? Oh, so we got, we got anti monitor that makes sure the, the heroes have enough time to thwart his plans. Like, what? Like, <laughs> I don't know. That that seemed like very contrived. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it. I the the whole uh, the whole treadmill thing is actually right out of the comic books. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is a treadmill, but I mean the the whole Barry ninety and all that stuff. Kind of, you know, it's just. I don't know. It was kind of the the, the whole Jefferson thing was kind of <clears throat> weird. Bringing him in, I understand why they wanted to and they needed to. But it just seemed kind of weird. Like there, right. there, well, there, didn't really, under- there didn't really seem a point for Jefferson to be there. Oh yeah, yeah, that part. Yeah, I know he was literally just brought, brought in by Pariah at the last second. <laughs> like, oh, you need to help. Um, well, okay, the treadmill thing was from the comics. Okay, fine. But what I don't understand though is <laughs> if if the anti monitor's plan is just to destroy the multiverse. Why does he need to do it in steps? And then if the if the Flash quits running on the treadmill, he's just going to destroy everything at once. Well, why not just destroy everything at once? Why, why not be that the the main plan? And then the backup plan is, oh well, I can't do it all at once. I got to do a piecemeal. Why would it be? I'm going to start out doing a piecemeal, but if that fails, I'm going to do it all at once. Like it, that doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, it, 
it, it's like you said, it's, it's full of MacGuffins, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. that kind of made me feel really weird just watching that scene where I'm like, I got to go back on there because he's going to destroy everything all at once. It's like, uh, but he's the one that put you on the treadmill, right? Like, so I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, anyway, I don't want to harp on the bad things, but like, I did like the whole thing where they brought in that clip from the Flash 1990 series. Yeah. And basically, like, said, like, oh, well, that, now that series is part of the Arrowverse now, too. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it basically created the whole, uh, it, it, I think they they did that after, it was an afterthought from what I read, too. Like, they didn't oh, okay. originally have that in there, but they, they, they got one of their editors out there to scour all the episodes and find something really cool to put in there, which I thought was cool. <laughs> um, the, uh, the thing is, it's like, okay, the Earth Prime is cool. And there still is a multiverse. Okay. Um, it isn't like they wiped out anything because we see at the very end you got like you know the the uh, Doom Patrol and Titans and uh, Star Girl <laughs> and uh, Brandon yeah. Routh's Superman. Which there is a rumor that Brandon Routh might be getting a limited series as Superman. Huh. Which could be interesting. Um, yeah. Because, but they already have another Superman show coming out, so I don't know. But what they were right. saying is that might be something on like um, HBO Max, like on the streaming service mm. that's coming out. Because they've got they've already got a Green Lantern show coming to HBO Max, and um, right, yeah. which Greg Berlanti is writing and producing, the creator of these shows. Mm. Yeah, so no word on who's going to cool. be uh, Green Lantern or anything. Um, I think it'd be cool if it was John Diggle. That's just me, but um, yeah, it would be. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It's it's uh, it was interesting. I mean, I loved all the cameos. Those were cool. We forgot mm-hmm. to talk about in the in the first uh, the first part. We had a uh, we had Tom Welling from Smallville, which was really cool. <laughs> who his uh, his character had given up his powers. Right. Which was kind of cool. I mean, that was a cool, uh, unexpected uh, cameo. I mean, it was expected. I knew after I found out about it, but you know, I didn't, I didn't think uh, I didn't think uh, Tom Welling would ever do that. But that was pretty cool. Um, and we got to see Lois from that world too, and find out that they had two kids. Um, they uh, right. In which... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, because I say and 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 Lois. From that show is also the actress who plays Alora now. So, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh wait, Laura. Alora. Oh, Alora. Oh, okay. Yeah. You see, Ka- I thought Ka- that Kara's was. Mom. I thought that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's weird, but <laughs> but because <laughs> that would be his Anne, but no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They, they kind of joke about incest a lot in these episodes, like when Kara like, sees um, Ray Palmer's version of, I mean, I, I, Clark, whatever. Yeah, Ray Brand, Palmer's Brand, version Brand, of Superman. Brandon Routh's Superman, yeah. There you go, yeah. yeah. And she's kind of like checking him out, and then like, I think it's um, Batwoman or someone's like, like be ca- careful that, that he's kind of your cousin, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> At least, at least they make yeah. fun of, make fun of it and don't just ignore it like the Star Wars movies. But um, right, they're just, yeah, they're just like, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, uh, oh yeah, and at the very end, it was kind of interesting too when they showed uh, things changed or whatever. Um, one of the other little cool things was uh, that changed was uh, John Diggle has two kids now. Yeah, because Sarah disappeared in uh, Flashpoint, and, yeah. was, and was replaced by uh, by John Junior. Mm. But now he has both John and Sarah, so so that's hmm, very interesting because that could have a lot of implications for all of season seven and season eight of Arrow. What? Vis a vis Mia and Connor and whatnot, like if that yeah. changes anything for the future, you know. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens because uh, they're, mm-hmm. they're supposed to be doing a possible spin off of uh, call, called uh, Green Arrow and the Black Canaries or in the Canaries yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, 
Also, uh, we find out that Lois and Clark have uh, two kids now. Mm. They used to have mm. one. So right. my my feeling on this is even though Oliver's dead, he needs to start paying child support because he created two kids. <laughs> Wait, Oliver's dad or him? No, no, Oliver's dead now. Oh but, yeah, at least but, Oliver's but, dead. Uh, no, no, because I'll, I'll, even though, even though he is dead, he he created uh, he he brought Sarah back, and somehow gave uh, <laughs> somehow gave Lois and Clark another son. So <laughs> he's gonna... <laughs> so I I'm thinking he owes child support to these people because I mean, kids aren't cheap. Um, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think there's much. Money in the Spectre business, though. So I don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Me, you know, I don't know. Maybe Barry has to pay for it now because he's left, and I don't know. I'm just trying to. Yeah. <laughs> so they can all raise the kids together, like in a commune setting or something. Yeah. But I mean, Barry's kid died, so it's like. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, or, or did she? I mean, yeah, I don't know because yeah. that was a weird. I mean, that was like a different version of yeah. herself altogether. <laughs> so it's like, did she even ever exist? I mean, that, that just got. Uh, I'm gonna get mad now because that I hate Eobard Thawne so much. <laughs> and that, 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 so, so that's one of the things that disappointed me. I thought Eobard was going to be part yeah. of this, and he wasn't in the crossover at all. So yeah, because they they teased that last year. Where he's like, oh, we'll meet each other in our next crisis. And he even winks at him after he says it, too. Like, to really be on the nose about it. Like, <laughs> I think that was just like, yeah. like a, oh, the crisis is coming. We're going to. Yeah. And and also, it might have been something where they didn't uh, know what was going on. I think a lot of things changed with John Cryer's uh, Lex Luthor. Because mm. I think that uh, a lot of the things that you, that, that, uh, that uh, Lex did in this probably would have been done by Eobard if they wouldn't have been able to get John Cryer. Right. That's my feeling on it. Um, plus, you already had uh, Tom Cavanaugh playing Nash, so it was like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. he's, he's played so many characters in this show. Yeah. Plus, too, Eobard, Eobard Vaughn already did that, though, in, in the season two of a legend with the whole sphere of reality or whatever. Yeah. So that that whole thing of like creating reality where he's like the hero or whatever. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> well, I don't know if the whole story would have been the same, but I think that basically they 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 uh, they rewrote things just basically because they were able to get John Cryer, mm-hmm. which I'm happy about because, like I said, he's the best Lex Luthor ever. Anyways, yeah, um, he's, yeah. he's great. He, he's I mean he's no. He's no match for, you know, Lenny Luther in Superman 4, but, you know, he's a close second. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other uh, major thoughts about the uh, episodes? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, just like, <clears throat> you know, oh, and just in general, like, how, how like, high the stakes were. Like, literally every single universe is being destroyed and, like, <laughs> They even, they even have like an actual monitor <laughs> monitor actually showing like the earth disappear on their like computer screen like whenever the wave of antimatter hits a particular earth or whatever um, you do have I think personally I don't know because they haven't you know season 5 has not picked up yet Supergirl yet but I think they showed the beginnings of Lena Luthor kind of maybe getting away from villain status a little bit because she she even said, you know, like, you know, of course, you know, if the entire multiverse is in danger, I'll help you save it. But then again, you you, you and everyone else has always looked at me so lowly or whatever, you know, to think of the worst of me or whatever type of thing. Like, yeah, I, I, know, did, so. see the, I did see the uh, preview for the next episode of Supergirl, the little uh, mm-hmm. little trailer for it. And, uh, it looks like uh, Lex and her might be teaming up, so who knows? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, because uh, but she remembers everything. I don't know if John gave her back all the memories or what happened. 
Oh yeah, okay. But she, but she, well, she, she actually remembers, and she's still, from what I can tell, it looks like she's still probably mad at Kara and everybody for lying to her. Right. I mean, that's understandable. Well, I think she'll probably at some point because you know, yeah, I think Lena has been lied to her entire life, basically by her entire family. Um, you know, she's finally found you know some new friends. And then they keep this huge secret from her. Although at the same time, I was rewatching season three of Supergirl with my dad, and you know she's kept secrets from Kara. I mean, she she lied about not having kryptonite, so it's like it's not like she's just like this innocent victim. But whatever, no, just you know whatever and that type of thing. But um, <clears throat> but I did like um, <clears throat> I really like the season. I mean, the episode three through five. I, I mean, I did like the whole like. Bruce Wayne has, like, turned into, like, a hardened killer, yeah. basically, because, like, on Earth-99, because, like, even his house just looks creepy. It's, like, this old mansion that's just fallen apart. There's, like, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, not weeds, but, like, the weeds that attach to your house. What's the name of that? I forgot the like name Ivy of it. Ivy or something? Um, yeah, Ivy is just, like, growing all over the front part of the house. Like the Maybe the it was poison been, Ivy. Uh, Oh, get it? Because, yeah, I wonder if that was meant to be kind of like a little <laughs> subtle, I didn't even think about that, a little yeah. subtle hint, you know. And and he basically kind of like, um, you know, he's kind of like a cautionary tale because he even tells Kate, you know, his Batwoman on Earth, uh, Earth One, you know, saying like, it, it only starts with killing one person and then you get a taste for it and then you kill another and then you kill another and then before you know it, you're pretty much killing every villain, no matter how bad they are. Like, like, like before it was like, I'll, I'll only kill the worst of the worst. And then it's just like, there is no bar anymore of like who deserves to die. Like, you know, yeah. and he ends up killing Superman in that, in that earth. Actually, that's, that was yeah. what um, caused the fight between him and Kara, because she had found out that he had, had um, Clark Kent's glasses, I think, or something like that, as a yeah. souvenir. Yeah, I mean, that's the it, other it, thing. That, that has a basis in the comic books too, because there is a, I think, like an alternate world where that happens and stuff. So that's kind of cool that they did that. <laughs> yeah. So that episode was really cool. I like that whole darkness aspect because, like, even even when they walk to the front door, I mean, it's all dark, and uh, the dude who's like his like his Alfred, not Alfred, I think an Alfred, no, not not, not Alfred, like the dude who's um. Basically, um, was it Lucius? I forgot his name. Lucius something or Luke Fox. Luke, Luke Fox. Well, like yeah, in Batwoman. Luke, yeah, Luke. Luke is Luke is like basically Batwoman's uh, right hand man, and uh, yeah, and, and the son of Lucius Fox, who was uh, in the in the in the in the Nolan verse, he was played by uh, played by uh, um, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Right. So. So he plays that same character in Earth ninety nine, but he's like a just like Bruce Wayne. He's like a really rough, yeah. like and in, and in, in Batwoman. He's like a nerd, but here he's like got like big muscles and stuff like that. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think that was probably it might have been the actor um, just being like, "Hey, I got a good body. Let's show it off." No, I'm, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired of playing the nerd. Like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because they kind of did that with Ray Palmer, too, for a while, because, like, yeah. he was, like, a nerdy guy, and then, like, <laughs> they show him, like, working out one episode, and, and I think it was Arrow, and then, um, uh, it could be me, uh, uh, not me, sorry, uh, Felicity Smoke is watching him work out, because he's doing the same exact workout technique that Oliver does, and she's like, like, oh, God, I think I have a type or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, so, um... Before we uh, close things up here, um, what was your favorite part of the whole crossover? I think um, the – oh, man, that's a lot. I mean, I guess probably the um, – at the end of episode four when Oliver – or, or, or Spectre is fighting um, with the Anti-Monitor, and, like, he basically does that thing where he, like, shoots out energy out of his eyes or whatever, and then basically, like, 
explodes the anti monitor, I guess, in the in the battle and that's when he creates the new um the u- new universe. That I think that scene uh, you know, as Spectre slash Oliver. I don't know, because he, he seems like he's both Spectre and Oliver. Like, he yeah. says, like, he still, his voice is all fucked up because of some weird effect they have on him. But, like, and he does kind of talk, like, almost like you would imagine the how a ghost speak. Like, there's not a whole lot of emotion. But, like, he still says this, the things that Oliver would say. Like, when he told, like, when, when he told Barry to go back into Speed Force, he said, run, Barry, run. That yeah. was what he would used to say to him, you know, so. <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of cool. I mean, I think probably, like, my favorite thing was just, I mean, there's a couple things. Like, I mean, I loved all the crossovers mm-hmm. um, of characters, which was kind of sweet. Um, I mean, we even got to see Swamp Thing at the end. Um, mm. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think the whole uh, – um, just uh I really like the developing relationship between Kate and and uh, Kara. Mm-hmm. The, the developing friendship. It's like the world's finest sort of friendship sort of thing, you know, like like what Batman and Superman have in the comics. And um I think that's gonna be really cool now that they're on the same earth. It'll be interesting to yeah. see if they have like smaller crossovers in the future where they, where Kara shows up on Batwoman and uh, Kate shows up on Supergirl or something, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. I think, was there, I watched the episode twice, and I don't remember if um, if I heard it right, but um, when Batwoman shows up in, um, I think it's episode five, does, does Carla, because she gets all excited, does she say, oh, look, there's two of us. Mean women, or did I hear that right, or is that, or was she say something else? I don't know. I'm. I'll have to. I'd have to rewatch that. Okay, because um, like she got all because like cause that, I was just wondering because like they they kind of like do the whole like woman power thing or whatever on that on that show, and I was thinking since she's like the only woman there so far yeah, because maybe it was that's what her. it is. Yeah, but you do. And then like Sarah all of a sudden, but yeah. Okay, Sarah was okay. Yes, I forgot. I just wondered because I thought she said, "Oh, look, there's two of us," and then she goes like, "Oh, sorry," like because she's hugging Barry as she's saying it or something. Uh, <laughs> um, like I don't know if I heard it wrong or not, but and, and <clears throat> little, little interesting stray things too. Like in my mind is like I think that now the way it appears is uh, National and Central City are like basically across the river from each other. Hmm. Okay. So that means. <laughs> Barry and Kara aren't that far away from each other, so right. I don't know huh. where I don't know where Gotham is in this situation, but uh, the um um other uh, other thing I liked was I liked a lot of the uh, little excitement from certain characters throughout the thing, like um when when Black Lightning notices that there's Superman. In the one episode, and he's like, he's like, so the whole Superman thing's real, like, <laughs> which is right. cool because I I noticed in like some of the early, some of these episodes of uh, Black Lightning in the past, they actually had a picture of uh, Jefferson on his desk somewhere where he was wearing a Superman T-shirt. Uh. So what I'm thinking is, is in his Earth originally, like Superman was a comic book character, like in, oh, wow. like, like like in our real world, and then. Now it's like on another Earth he's real, so it's like what the fuck, you know? <laughs> yeah, see, I was I was wondering about that too because like it's, it's good to know what Earth he's finally on because I, I was doing all kinds of research when the crossover yeah. first started. I could not find what Earth Black Lightning lived on. I'm like, I, well, obviously it's not on. Why well, do I give anything away? But it, on the the Black Lightning episode Earth Crisis, it's it's made clear that. He's not on either Earth One or, or Earth Two. I'm not going to say why I know that, but yeah, that's or, revealed or that. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I was like, "Well, okay, he's got to be somewhere." But yeah, and um, yeah, it was '73, I guess. So um, yeah, that's probably the year that uh, Black Lightning was created, or something. Is what I'm guessing is how they chose. Yeah, that. probably. Yeah. A- um, <laughs> but um, yeah, and then there was also the um, oh, what was the other one? There was like a. I just like, or, um, oh, like, uh, when, uh, Kate shows up 
and uh, something somehow it's it's revealed that Bruce Wayne is Batman, and or or something like oh no no Kate Kate takes off her mask at the point, and then Oliver's like oh that makes sense, <laughs> <laughs> something like that where he's basically finds out that you know he and in the same fell swoop he finds out that you know Batman was Bruce Wayne and Kate Kane is. Batwoman is just like ah okay, and then she's just like don't tell don't tell anybody you know it's just like... <laughs> th- th- those little things are kind of cool where you get yeah. these like little uh kind of like almost like fanboy sort of moments from people um yeah yeah that was basically <laughs> all I had to say about the crisis do you have anything else to add before we <laughs> leave uh just um. Yeah, I guess a little bit. Just, just the whole um, aspect of like this is going to change Sarah Lance's character significantly for um, the Legends of Tomorrow season five. Yeah, uh, because I'll, it was kind of weird because at first I, I didn't really understand <clears throat> why she was making such a big deal about saving Oliver. I mean, other than the fact that yeah. You know, she was like a he was like a former friend of hers, and you know, blah blah blah. And but love like, her too. They, yeah, they they had not spent much time. Yeah, but they had not spent much time with each other since then, and they didn't even really cross that much path. So it did seem kind of odd that she was like hell bent on saving him, like to the point of like like drop everything else. This is my mission now in life is yeah. to make sure. Like, and then I figured out it's because she even told Barry. You know, when she was kind of brooding by herself, you know, that he's the last person in her life that, like, tethers her to, like, her old life. Like, yeah, because her, now her sister did. and her dad are dead and other people, right. you know, and <clears throat> other people from her past. Yeah. Makes sense. And so that made a lot of sense that that's why she was so hell on, like, finding this Lazarus pit on, like, some random earth and, you know, just like. <clears throat> I am. Um... And so, like. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that'll be interesting to see what happens on Legends, which is starting soon. Um the uh only other thing I, I have is like everybody always refers to this as the Arrowverse. Mm-hmm. I came up with a better name for it the other day and I don't know why anybody's never called it this. I think it should be the Oliverse. <laughs> the Oliverse. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> it just sounds better to me. <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> but but on that note, I think we can uh, end this uh, long episode. Hopefully, some people listen to this. If you if you made it this far, um, be sure to check out our uh, Patreon, our uh, um, T Public. Get some cool swag and um i don't know be sure to subscribe and share with your friends yeah and um it's okay if i play our audience out with a little bit of music this time yeah we can do that all right i've got my guitar with me maybe i'll just play a little bit nice little ditty like hello kitty yes ditty. little ditty like hello kitty <laughs> All right. Let's see if let's see if you can. Hopefully, it's not shitty. Oh wait, no. (laughs) Well, hopefully, hopefully. Um, uh, let me know if you can hear this, okay? And I'll I'll stop if I can. But like, okay. That sound okay? Yep, sounds good. All right, cool. I'll play a little bit.
Bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com. Yeah.